In the chilling silence of the prison cell, as the man responsible for a Chiampong's unjust imprisonment suffers a severe asthma attack, the air fills with the desperate cries of other inmates calling for a Chiampong to help. Yet, a Chiampong stands motionless, wrapped in his own turmoil. It wasn't that he lacked compassion, but rather he feared that any attempt to intervene could be misconstrued as an act of revenge, especially if the man worsened or died during his aid. This fear paralyzed him, keeping him rooted in place, a silent observer to the unfolding crisis. As he wrestled with his conscience, a faint whisper seemed to echo in the confines of his cell, urging him, a Kiampong, a Kiampong, forgive and forget. After three long years of silence, a Chiampong finally heard the gods whisper and felt compelled to act during a crisis. In his prison cell, he quickly used the few herbs he had to treat a fellow inmate suffering from an asthma attack. Miraculously, the man soon recovered, gasping back to life amidst the cheers of the other prisoners. Overwhelmed by his sudden revival and the praise for Akiampong, the man broke down crying. Before everyone, he knelt before Achiampong, begging for forgiveness. He confessed to his crimes, the deadly plot against Achiampong, and the false allegations that had condemned him to this fate. His tears and emotional confession shocked the other inmates, who couldn't understand why Achiampong had never spoken of the injustice. The cell filled with cries of disbelief and sorrow, as they grappled with the depth of betrayal a Chiampong had endured in silence. Back in Obenawa's home, despite her lack of feelings for the new suitor, pressure from her mother left her with no choice but to accept his proposal. The wealthy suitor provided them with significant financial support and even built a house for them. Within a few months, Obenewa found herself genuinely falling for him, and they soon set a date for their wedding. Love can be fleeting, and gratitude can be rare. It seemed hard for some people to remember the good done for them. Obenewa and her mother, caught up in their new life of comfort, seemed to have forgotten the sacrifices Achiampong had made for them. They had chosen financial security over the deep, enduring love Achiampong had shown, highlighting a harsh reality of human nature where money often overshadows past loyalty and love. Achiampong was finally proven innocent, and the man who lied about him had his jail term increased. When Achiampong returned to Obenewa and her mother, they were shocked to see him free after less than four years, instead of the ten they expected. Achiampong greeted his mother-in-law, but she gave him no response. He then approached Obenewa, who couldn't find the words to speak to him. Instead, she just cried uncontrollably, overwhelmed by guilt and confusion. The scene was heavy with sadness and betrayal, as Achiampong realized the profound changes that had occurred during his absence and the emotional distance that now lay between him and Obinawa. Obenewa, torn between her past love and her current life, approached her mother, hoping to return to Achiampong now that he was free. But her mother's response was cold and firm. She told Obinawa that choosing Achiampong would mean losing the house built by the wealthy suitor, returning them to their old, miserable life. If you go back to that poor, empty man, you are no longer my daughter, her mother declared sharply. She tried to reassure Obenewa, minimizing her emotional conflict as a small issue, saying, You are not the only one who has had to leave someone. We will compensate Akshayampong and have him leave this community. This conversation left Obenewa heartbroken, trapped between her mother's ultimatums and her own lingering feelings for Achayampong, showcasing the painful reality of choosing between love and security. Obenewa, with a heavy heart, decided to follow her mother's advice. She went back to Akampong and told him it was over between them, that they could not be together anymore. Achampong, looking deeply hurt, 
responded to Obenewa with sadness in his voice. My dear, I heard rumors in prison, but I didn't believe them because we promised never to betray each other. We have so much in common. Why are you doing this? Please tell me where I went wrong. I asked you to wait for me. His words were filled with pain and disbelief as he struggled to understand the change in the woman he loved, making the moment deeply emotional and marked by a profound sense of betrayal. Akyampong wept bitterly, his sobs echoing the deep pain of a heart shattered by betrayal. Despite his sorrow, he knew that he couldn't force Obenewa to stay with him if her heart was no longer in it. Feeling abandoned not only by Obenewa, but by the gods he had trusted, Achiampong decided to leave the community. That night, he dreamt of the gods who told him, We can set the path and propose destiny, but we cannot control the will of man. Everything happens for a reason. Resigned to his fate, Achiampong visited Obenewa the next day. With a heavy heart, he told her he was returning to his village. He asked for the mystical pot back, the one he had entrusted to her, since it held his life and powers. The weight of leaving, coupled with the need to reclaim part of his life left in her care, marked a poignant end to his hopes and dreams in the community. Frightened, Obinawa confided in her mother about the secret of the pot that a Shempong needed back. Her mother, driven by fear and suspicion, warned her, My daughter, if he takes that pot, he might use its powers against us to get revenge. We can't let him have it. Trusting her mother's judgment, Obenewa reluctantly agreed and faced Achiampong with a heavy heart. She told him, Your pot is safe with me, but I can't give it back to you just yet. We need to wait for the right time. Her voice trembled as she spoke, the weight of withholding something so vital to him bearing down on her, deepening the divide of betrayal between them. Achiampong felt a sharp sting of shock and betrayal when Obenewa told him he couldn't have the pot back yet. Realizing his life hung in the balance, he masked his desperation and calmly responded, Okay, madam, I understand. Obenewa, trying to control the situation, warned him. Don't try to leave now. Wait for the right time before I can hand over the pot to you. If you leave now, you'll regret it. With a heavy heart, Akiampong nodded and replied, Okay, madam, I understand. I will patiently wait for your instruction. His words were resigned, filled with the sadness of someone who has been deeply hurt, yet has no choice but to comply. Achempong found himself in a desperate situation, alone and at the mercy of his former mother-in-law and Obenewa. Hoping that humility might soften their hearts, he stayed close, waiting for them to return the pot that held his life force. However, sensing a threat in letting him live, his mother-in-law made a dark decision to end his life. She secretly poisoned his food with a powerful toxin, hoping to eliminate him quietly. Unaware of the lethal danger, Achiampong ate the food and soon after suffered terribly, vomiting throughout the night. Despite her actions, Achiampong's deep knowledge as a herbalist in Ghana, where it's common for spiritualists to protect themselves against such threats, saved him. No poison could take the life of a man who had prepared himself against all forms of physical harm, a practice not uncommon among powerful herbalists in Ghana and across Africa. Obenewa was kept in the dark about her mother's dreadful act. The next morning, Obenewa's mother-in-law anxiously awaited news of Akeampong's demise. Instead, she was startled by a knock at the door. Opening it, she found a Kiampong greeting her with Asiu Machu, which means good morning in their language. Shocked, she nearly collapsed, exclaiming, Hey, Achampong, a ghost. What are you doing here? Achampong calmly replied, My in-law, I'm not a ghost. You can touch me. I'm as human as you. Despite knowing she had tried to poison him, 
A Cheampong chose not to confront her about her actions. He acted as if nothing had happened, driven by his hope to simply retrieve his pot and return to his hometown. His restraint and the sadness in his eyes spoke volumes of the betrayal he felt. Yet his need for the pot kept him patient and tactful, enduring the pain and betrayal in silence. After the failed attempt to poison Akiampong, his mother-in-law grew terrified, convinced that if he regained possession of the pot, he might seek revenge. She hurried to her daughter, Obenawa, spinning a tale of urgency. She told her that once her new husband came to marry her and she moved in with him, she wouldn't be able to manage the pot's powerful responsibilities. Her mother insisted that Obeniwa hand over the pot to her so she could safeguard it and eventually learn how to handle it properly. Trusting her mother completely, Obeniwa naively believed her story and handed the pot over, unaware of her mother's true intentions. This act deepened the betrayal, leaving a champong further isolated and vulnerable, stripped of the one thing that held his life and power, all while under the shadow of deceit and manipulation. Everyone in the community was shocked when they learned about Obeinewa and her mother's betrayal of a champong. Their ungrateful and selfish actions disappointed many, but there were also those who mocked Achiampong for his misfortune, heartbroken. Achiampong couldn't believe how his love and kindness had led to such a tremendous letdown, placing his very life in jeopardy. Meanwhile, Obenewa had married a wealthy man and along with her mother was enjoying a life of riches. In stark contrast, Achiampong was left with nothing, not even the security of his own life, as he grappled with the profound betrayal by those he had once loved and trusted deeply. Achiampong lived a life of quiet desperation, while Obenifa busied herself with market business, uncaring about his plight, her mother turned him into a household servant. He did all the housework, labored on the farm, and even washed clothes. Whenever he dared to complain, her mother would coldly remind him that she controlled his life through the pot. She threatened to break it if he disobeyed her, effectively ending his life. Fearful for his survival, Acheampong would meekly comply with her harsh demands, pleading for her mercy just to keep his life safe. Achampong never confronted Obenawa about her betrayal, or why she had handed such a critical secret and power over to her mother. Deep down, his heart ached with the pain of her betrayal, but he clung to a sliver of hope. He lived each day with the sole wish of one day reclaiming his pot, the symbol of his life and freedom. This hope was all that sustained him through the days filled with labor and silent suffering under the watchful eye of his cruel mother-in-law. With just a few days until Obenewa's traditional wedding, preparations were in full swing. However, the impending arrival of her wealthy fiancé brought a new demand. He insisted that a Chiampong must leave their home before the ceremony. Hearing this, Obenewa finally took a stand. She pleaded with her mother to return the pot to Achiampong, arguing that his consistent good character proved he posed no threat to them. Her mother reluctantly agreed. They called Achiampong and, attempting to make amends, offered him a large sum of money as compensation for his past kindness and the healing he had provided Obenewa. But Achiampong gently refused the money. He told them, My in-law and Obenewa, you know I have never taken payment after healing anyone. If I did, the gods would punish me. Everything I did, I did out of love for you and in service to the gods. I don't want your money. I just want my pot back so I can leave in peace. This response highlighted a Cheampong's integrity and his enduring commitment to his values, despite the deep betrayal he had suffered. His wish was simple yet profound. 
to reclaim his life's essence and find peace away from the pain and betrayal that had overshadowed his recent years. Obeniwa rushed to her room and wept bitterly. The reality of her situation hit her hard. She knew Acheyampong had loved her deeply, but she had been unable to choose him over her mother's wishes. Heartbroken and filled with regret, she told her mother she was leaving for work and did not want to see Achiampong at the house when she returned. However, her mother was adamant about not letting Achiampong take the pot, fearing for their safety. In a heated moment, in front of Achiampong, she declared, Over my dead body, I will never hand over the pot to Achiampong. Not today, not tomorrow. This was the first time Obi Niwa openly showed anger towards her mother, frustrated and saddened by the relentless control and the looming loss of a man who had only shown her kindness and love. Obenewa, overwhelmed by sadness and betrayal, confronted her mother. Why are we so ungrateful? Can't we just thank him for all he's done and give him his pot back? This isn't fair. Her mother, feeling insulted, snapped back. Are you insulting me? Remember, I'm your mother, and I only want what's best for you. In a fit of anger, she stormed into the room, grabbed the pot, and emerged with fury in her eyes. She shouted at Acheampong. It's because of you that my own daughter is turning against me. Holding the pot aloft, she threatened. I will break this pot and end your life right now. The tension peaked as Acheampong and Obenewa watched in horror, realizing the depth of the hatred and desperation that had taken hold of her mother. The situation was charged with emotion, each person caught in a tragic web of misunderstanding and fear. As her mother lifted the pot to smash it on the ground, Acheampong and Obenewa cried out in despair, rushing toward her, pleading, Mommy, please stop! Please don't do this. But their pleas fell on deaf ears. With anger clouding her judgment, her mother shattered the pot on the ground. She stood back, expecting to see Acheampong collapse and die. Instead, a huge thunderclap shook the air, and in a heart-stopping moment, Obeniwa suddenly collapsed. As she tried to stand, her legs failed her, and she fell again, her cries filling the air. From that day, Obeniwa was crippled once more, her ability to walk cruelly snatched away again. The tragic irony of her condition returning was a harsh blow, underscoring the profound consequences of anger and betrayal that had torn their family apart. As Obeniwa struggled on the ground, unable to regain her footing, her mother's cries pierced the air. She frantically pleaded, my daughter, please, try to walk. Her calls for help quickly drew a crowd, shocked to see Obenewa suddenly lose her ability to walk. In a mix of panic and desperation, her mother turned to Achiampong, begging him to restore her daughter's mobility. However, Achiampong, with sadness shadowing his features, explained the grim reality. The healing powers I once had were stored in the pot you destroyed. He said softly, I entrusted you with that pot, not just as a protector of my life, but as a test of trust and love, but it was not valued as I hoped. He paused, the crowd silent, hanging on his every word. I told you the pot held my life force to see if you could truly care for something beyond yourselves. Had I said it contained Obenewa's well-being, it might have seemed like I was using it to manipulate or coerce your affections. I wanted our relationship to be based on genuine respect and love, not on fear or obligation. Unfortunately, my attempt to protect my heart led us here. His confession laid bare the tragic misunderstanding that had led to their current sorrow. The revelation deepened the sense of regret and loss felt by all, illustrating the consequences of mistrust and the importance of cherishing the bonds of care and responsibility entrusted to us. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, the news of Obenewa's tragic condition 
led her would-be husband to call off their impending marriage. Overwhelmed by the complications, he not only cancelled the wedding, but also sold the house he had built for them, severing all ties. Feeling the bitter sting of rejection and betrayal, Achiampong decided to leave the community and return to his village, seeking solace in his old home. Obenewa was left to grapple with overwhelming pain and sorrow, consequences of her mother's actions. She had lost everything, Achiampong, the love of her life, and her ability to walk. Her life had turned into a series of endless days, filled with regret and longing for what could have been. Her mother, once driven by greed and manipulation, found herself back at square one, engulfed in regret and the harsh judgment of their community. One fateful night, consumed by despair and seeing no escape from her misery, Obenewa made a tragic decision. In a moment of profound darkness, she ended her mother's life and then her own, unable to bear the burden of her losses and the unending sorrow. This tragic story serves as a powerful reminder of the dangers of greed and ungratefulness. It underscores the devastating impact that selfish actions can have on the lives of others. The consequences of betraying those who offer kindness and support can be dire and irreversible. It teaches us that every act of kindness deserves gratitude, not betrayal. We must remember not to repay good with evil, for the fallout can be catastrophic, not just for others, but also for ourselves. To our viewers watching from around the world, thank you for your time and for following this story to its somber conclusion. Your engagement and feedback are invaluable to us. Please continue to support Anansi Web of Tales by subscribing for more stories that blend moral lessons with captivating narratives. Let us know where you're watching from and how this story has touched you. Together, let's keep the tradition of meaningful storytelling alive. Thank <laughs> you.